And here you can see it. It's a, um, it's a scan mesh of uh, architectural sculpture. Anyways, if you look at it carefully, you can see that it's not very well aligned with any of the axes. So one of the things we can do here is we're going to edit this mesh. And then I'm going to um, take a few spots on it here. Let's do this. Okay, so I just grabbed some of these faces that are kind of on the bottom. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to orient them. So I'm going to orient them relative to the Z-plane. Um, so it should be facing up in the Z-plane after we're done here. There we go. So it's, you can see now I've oriented it. So the X and the Y-plane are down. Um, if I show the origin, there's the origin right there. Uh, we may also want to um, select those, some of those guys again. Okay, see the center of the selection? We may want to move the center of the selection to the origin. Uh, and so that will be this command... Uh, right there. You see I've moved it. So I can orient, you know, you have tools to orient these meshes as they come in and, and deal with them. Um, usually the, so there's two sort of major techniques to deal with these things. In this case I have a very organic mesh. Um, okay, let's finish mesh editing. Hold on a second. Okay, so now I'm done editing the mesh. Um, I'll tell you what, wait a second. Let's do this. Uh, I forgot about something. Let's try this. Um, if you look inside of this guy, you will see that there is something going up inside of there. Um, so if we grab a section of it here, Um, going to hide the current selection, you can see that there's some there's some weird looking things going on inside of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just I'm going to do a fence selection here, and with any luck, I'm going to edit that. So what that's doing is it's basically bringing it up in the sort of the sub D tools. Uh, and I can I can use all my sub D tools to, to deal with this. Um, uh, so I can let's go let's go hide a few things here so I can see what I'm doing. Um, let's grab the faces. Um, hide some of these faces so we can see inside. But probably didn't hide enough of them. Um, one of the operations that I like is this advanced expansion. Right, let's go. Because I can grab and expand my selection. And then I can hide it. Okay, now we can see the little problem area. And so we can, um, in the sub-D world, we can kind of clean this up a little bit if we want. Um, so that's pretty good there. And I can, uh, I can go ahead and delete those faces. And then I can grab this and do a quad fill on it, I hope. So I just filled that area, that whole area in 
with uh, it's the right click uh, it's quad fill command um, and you know right now it's quad edges but when we when we were dealing with triangles it does a basically a triangle fill and the cool thing about it is it uses the curvature uh, around the area to to help us uh, fill it in with you can see it's curved uh, and not flat uh, and basically this tool right here will will help us do that as well the curve tool which uh, is is fitting a surface around it um, and that will take it's using sort of these red these red vertices out here to create this temporary surface and then we're fitting um, all of these interior polygons to that temporary surface um, the other thing we can do there is we can relax things and relax kind of does like an averaging um, and we can you know let's go to zero here zero relaxing does nothing but then you can just grab it and pull it and you can get more and more relaxation in it and so that smooths it out a bit Okay, so then I'm going to unhide everything. And so let's say we've got this, this editing done the way we wanted. Um, if we end editing and accept the command, it's going to push those changes back into the sub-D mesh. So you can see the sub-D, the mesh here, uh, the scan mesh is now cleaned up. And there's all sorts of operations you can do on that. So, you know, if you happen to have come in here and, um, you know, you had a hole in your mesh, which, which is a very often sort of thing, you could go in and, and fix that up um, with that, those commands as well. Uh, so there's a lot of mesh repair and, and mesh smoothing tools uh, that we can use there. So let's, uh, so it, let's assume you have a, a fairly decent mesh, doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and we can do, um, oh, I'm gonna finish editing, finish editing the mesh, we can do a quad wrap. Now what QuadRap is going to do is let's let's go with like three. Is it's going to wrap a bunch of quads around of this given size. So three percent of the size of this is going to be sort of the edge size of the quad. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it's mm, it's kind of rough. I kind of have lost some of the features you can see like right here. I didn't have, you know, it wasn't small enough to get up in here. Uh, yeah, we could probably make that work. Uh, but typically you want to kind of see some of the detail coming out in this mode. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit smaller on that quad wrap. And so when you do that, you're going to blow away the old results. So let's do uh, one. 0.75, which is a pretty pretty good one. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna quad wrap it with a little bit smaller quads, and so it's gonna pick up a, a quite a bit more of the detail. So you can see now we've we've picked up the detail up in that little piece there, and um, you know although you can't you know you can't see a lot of the detail in the eyes, um, uh, and you know it's still it's still kind of mushy so to speak. It doesn't have a lot of detail. We have a tool to take care of that. Um, and so we don't need to go to a super high polygon count in quad wrap. Uh, what we can do is we can do this thing called shrink wrap. And shrink wrap is going to drop these points uh, onto the subdivision mesh and embed it into the mesh in such a way that when we go to convert it, it will, um, it will pick up the detail. So if I, okay, so I'm gonna say show preview and see, even at zero, it started to uh, it started to pick up some more detail. And if I go up to level two, you can see it's picked up a lot of detail from that mesh. So it, you know, literally, you almost can't tell the difference. Um, between the two of them now. Uh, so then we can say, okay, we're going to accept that. And um, 
one of the things we typically do is we, we, we look for open edges, no open edges found. So if you quad wrap and you don't have any open edges, you can do that. Um, and then, you know, we're ready to convert. So we'll go ahead and convert it. And I really didn't get a chance to show you sort of the manual uh, process where you can actually draw on the you can actually draw on the control mesh, you know, and and create things directly on it. Um, but this is the one that most people tend to use. Maybe I'll go in. I got a couple minutes left. Maybe I'll go in and show you show you a couple of the tools to do that real quick after this. So right now it's converting it. There is the SOLIDWORKS body, and you can see that it's a valid, it's a valid solid, so you can use all your solid modeling operations on it. So uh, let me uh, turn that off, and just real quick here, we got a couple of minutes left, um, show you some of the other tools that are available on this. Okay, so the other way to get a sub-D on top of this is actually to draw. So you can, for example, if you want to draw edges, and it will kind of automatically fill some things in for you. Um, you can also paint faces. So if you started a face, you move over, paint faces, you can paint like up to there. Um, grab an edge. You can grab some edge. Oops. Grab two edges and you can uh, bridge between them. And then here again, you can, you can grab this guy and do a quad fill to fill in that. Um, you can do it in a fairly rough way, and then you, you can use your subdivide all if you need more detail in there. And then this all works with that shrink wrap business as well um, to bring out the detail in the mesh. 